Matthew Adamic. While watching your latest Q&A, I stumbled across a YouTube channel produced by what I believe to be an independent Scientologist. It was an attack video against you, and it was hypercritical of what this person believed was your attack against Scientology as a religion. He was critical of the fact that you were unable to differentiate between Scientology the Church and Scientology the Religion. I guess my question is, given the nature of the YouTube video as being angry, hateful, and overly sensitive to anyone critical or anyone questioning the validity of Scientology as a true religion, what really is the difference between Scientology the Church as an entity and those who practice the religion as independents? I personally don't see the difference as it pertains to the general nature of anybody who's connected to the church or the religion, as they both seem to possess the same hateful and bigoted characteristics. Furthermore, I believe that the fact that Scientology the Church goes after independent Scientologists as squirrels as vigorously as those they deem suppressive or enemies of the Church proves that there is very little to no difference between the two. Yeah, good old independent Scientologists. Um, I've tried to have a sort of live and let live attitude towards those guys, um, but you know, I, I don't agree with what they're doing, and I think they're still just caught up in the mind traps and bullshit of Scientology, and they just sort of perpetuate that out in the real world. I don't give them a pass as easily as I do existing in the church Scientologists, because when you're out of the church, when you've been kicked out, you know, or you leave, and uh, you go out and practice independent Scientology, you have full access to all the information I have put out, many, many others have put out over the last few decades about L. Ron Hubbard and Scientology and the legitimacy of either one of those things. And both of them, of course, are completely illegitimate and ridiculous. So people who have access to that information, you know, sci let me say this, Scientologists don't have access to that information. They self-police and they are policed very carefully by the Church of Scientology. When you get out and you can see all of it and you still make the conscious decision to continue on with an authoritarian control system and ideas that have been debunked up one side and down the other, I just go, man, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, I mean, seriously. But like I said, People are going to live their lives and they're going to do whatever they're going to do, regardless of what I have to say about it. So, you know, live and let live, right? As long as they're not hurting other people, I don't really care. Um, now, Scientology the Church is, you know, there is a difference between Scientology the Church and Scientology the Philosophy or the Religion. Uh, Scientology the Church is an authoritarian control system that exists for really only one purpose, and that is to make money. And it's a scam, and it uses religious cloaking in order to hide its true nature. But the religious cloaking is very involved, and it's very complicated, and it involves a tremendously large cosmology and mythology and a lot of faith-based ideas that people buy into. So it's easy for them to get involved in Scientology and talk about it as a valid, distinct, and unique religion. Uh, it has uh, not just a set of ideas, but practices and mindsets, and, and it creates a kind of euphoria, uh, which is the thing that actually generates the real psychological and emotional fervor that people feel about religious belief. It's not just, as I was referring earlier in, the, in this Q&A video this week, I was talking, I, I mentioned that, that religion is not just a set of ideas. It's an experience. It's something that people have to subjectively go through. Uh, that's part of what religion is. So, um, so if you just take the ideas away from this authoritarian structure, then you have a set of techniques and, and ideas which can, in and of themselves, create a kind of euphoric experience for people. Because they can get auditing or read and listen to L. Ron Hubbard outside the church and get that same kind of euphoric experience or have some kind of realization or what they call cognition. Oh, wow, I didn't know that before. You know, they read something from Hubbard that they've never seen before. And they go, wow, 
that's really cool or really interesting. I didn't know that before. I didn't look at that that way before. He's really smart for pointing it out or putting it into those words that I'd never thought of or seen before. And therefore, there's something you know valid to this. Well, that's a very personal experience that somebody's having with the materials of Scientology. And they can have that experience outside of that whole authoritarian control structure that is the Church of Scientology. Um, however, my argument has always been and continues to be that all of that euphoric experience that somebody's having, either through Dianetics auditing or Scientology auditing or through Hubbard's materials, you can get a lot easier, a lot safer in other things. Uh, you can go get some counseling. You can read some philosophers, like real philosophers, not L. Ron Hubbard's plagiarized nonsense. Uh, go back and actually read the original material that, he's, that he, he cribbed from. Um, you know, go read some science, go read some philosophy, uh, go read some other religious materials, you know, like go out and, and sample a lot of things and you're going to find there's all kinds of experiences in the world that provide very interesting, you know, <laughs> feedback to your mind and to your emotional state and, uh, and you don't have to buy into this guy, L. Ron Hubbard, who presents some common sense principles mixed in with all kinds of landmines and all kinds of goofy false ideas that don't help and in fact make life worse and more difficult and harder to, to get through or to live. What's on my mind these days is the emotional tone scale of Scientology because I'm doing the whole, you know, I'm writing the, doing the research and writing the script for that is the next Basics of Scientology video. And Hubbard's nonsense about what emotion is, where it comes from, how it's manifested, the scale of emotions that Hubbard provides, and what he has to say about, you know, how you, how you control and manipulate other people through emotions. All of this is pure nonsense. It doesn't help anybody. It is really not good information. Uh, you know, is, is a general way of putting it. It's not good. Uh, and I'll break down, you know, a lot of examples and reasons why when I, when I get that video out. But um, that's just one example of what I'm talking about where you, you know, you can become very emotionally damaged by trying to apply or use this information. You will have really screwed up ideas about why people act the way they do because they don't act the way they do because of, how, because of Hubbard's explanations. Maybe 25% of the time, you know, maybe 10% of the time, this information on emotion and on the tone scale might work and then you go, oh, well, see, it worked, it worked. And so therefore, all of it's true, which is a completely illogical and unwarranted conclusion. Just because something works once or twice doesn't mean the whole body of knowledge that is there is true. It just means you had one experience and you lucked into or might have uh, had with this one person, this one time, a positive experience. That's, that is not you know, okay, settled science, we got it all figured out now. That's how Hubbard did things. So that's not how you want to do things, you know? So, um, and, and of course, Hubbard encourages this kind of thinking in his writings and in his lectures. So again, if you're listening or uh, reading this stuff, even outside the Church of Scientology, and you're not using critical thinking or, or reading this very carefully, you could buy into and accept things as true that are absolutely not true, and this will just screw up your thinking. Um, so I, you know, that's why I say just stay the hell away from, from it if you, if you can. I mean, I, on the one hand, I go, look, if you want to go find out about it, go find out about it. Knock yourself out. Uh, you know, it's not my place to tell you what to do or not to do. But if you're asking me, should I read this stuff? Should I do something with this? I say no, <laughs> you know, because I know the landmines that are in this stuff. And there's a lot of them and you'll step on them and they'll, they'll blow up and it won't be pretty. So... Anyway, so that's, I don't know, I, I, I hope that kind of gives some uh, idea of the difference between these two things and why I tend to rail against or at least not endorse or encourage people to, to study Scientology outside the church.